Welcome to The Real News. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. In education news from Chicago, a dozen parents and activists have entered the fifth day of a hunger strike to demand officials adopt a community-developed plan for the future of Diet High School. We know this is political. We know this is about ignoring black parents, because that's what this is about. This is racist, and Stevie Wonder can see that. The city is currently considering several proposals and has scheduled a public hearing for September. Chicago Public Schools says their process is community-driven and will select the best educational option. Located in the predominantly African-American neighborhood of Bronzeville on Chicago's South Side, Diet has long been a center of community struggle, especially since it was slated for closure, for closure in 2012. Now joining us to discuss this are two guests. We're joined by G2 Brown. He's a longtime Chicago education activist. And he was with the Kenwood Oakland, Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. We're also joined by Pauline Lippman, Professor of Educational Policy Studies and Director of the Collaborative for Equity and Justice in Education at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So G2, we know you're joining us um, from outdoors, which is unusual, but you're at, you're, we're at, you're at the site of where this is all happening. Tell us why yes. parents have gone to the lengths of a hunger strike. Absolutely. Um, Members, we formed a coalition called the Coalition to Revitalize Diet High School. First, I would say I've been on a I've been on a local school council at Diet since 2003, um, and since 2009, we've been trying to engage Chicago Public Schools on a vision for how to improve education, not only at Diet but sort of a, a K through 12 system of education in our neighborhood. As parents, uh, and, and this is not our job as parents. You know, some communities get that K through 12 education just because they are who they are uh, in the same city. Uh, and since that time, Chicago Public Schools has done nothing but sabotage the improvements at Diet High School, uh, like having the largest increase of students going to college in the entire city in 2008, and then for two straight years, the largest decrease in arrests and suspensions, 2008 and 2009, with a nationally recognized restorative justice program, and then in 2011, winning the ESPN Rise Up Award, beating out over 400 other schools around the country. As a small school that needed some support, we won a $4 million renovation from ESPN to our athletic facilities. And the next year, they phased the school out. What, so, so the process has never been community driven. Uh, we submitted a proposal to CPS for Diet Global Leadership and Green Technology High School as the hub for what we call a sustainable community school village in April of this year. And G2, the can, you, can you tell us how this plan contrasts with the other plans that CPS is considering? Absolutely. Uh, the, the plan for Walter Diet Global Leadership and Green Technology High School envisions our children as community-centered scholars, uh, looks at young people uh, having a course, of set, a course of study that coincides with 21st century, uh, um, with uh, life and business in the 21st century. So we want our young people to understand, uh, to study green technology because they understand um, how uh, to impact their world. Uh, studying green technology, young people will learn urban agriculture as they live in a food desert, which will allow them to be able to address real life issues that they encounter every day. And global leadership, because we want our young people to see themselves as global citizens, not as minorities, but as part of a global family and have the capacity and the confidence to impact the world. And we want it to be a district-ran Chicago public school uh, institution as opposed to the other two proposals where they will be contract schools, where they will be ran by private companies. And it's insulting to our community that the only institutions you propose for black families are institutions connected to athletics or connected to entertainment. We want strong athletics. We want strong arts, music uh, in our schools, but we want them as part of a well-rounded academic institution. And G2, just like I they have in Lincoln you, Park. Um, what other options do parents and families in the neighborhood have? I know one protester what? told a local news agency, now that mm. diet has been phased out, the last uh, class, it was just 13 students graduated in June. Um, yes. If diet isn't reopened, uh, one protester told uh, w WGN TV, her child would have to travel 16 miles to get to the nearest high school. Absolutely. Um, that parent, 
because I, I don't want to call her a protester. That mother is Jeanette Ramon and her child. Uh, they're looking at Lakeview, which is a, where, a high quality neighborhood high school that's two blocks away from Rahm Emanuel's house. There's another parent named Anna Jones who had to send her child to Little Village High School. Which, you know, ironically, is the school where parents waged a 19-day hunger strike to win in 2001. Um, it's a shame that parents have to starve themselves. Because these are mothers and fathers. Uh, we have to starve ourselves to have our voices heard. While other parents in other parts of the city of Chicago have to, you know, parents in, in Lincoln Park and in Uptown and Rogers Park simply went to a meeting. They said they didn't want a charter school, and they put, and the CPS pulled it off the table. Parents in Hyde Park uh, went to pressure their local alderman, the same alderman that's attempting to block what we're trying to do, and said they wanted the, the overcrowding at Kenwood Academy to be relieved. And in three months, they had the keys to the school, and now Cantor is a seventh and eighth grade academy to relieve the overcrowding at Kenwood. We've been working on this for five years, so it is a, it is a clear referendum on structural and institutional racism in the United States when in, engaged and involved black parents who have developed a visionary proposal uh, uh, for public education in Bronzeville are ignored because of politics. And I so wanted yes, we'll Pauline put our bodies Lippen. on the line. Hey, Jito, I wanted to bring Pauline Lipman into the conversation. So Pauline, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about a very specific school in Chicago's South Side. How, explain yeah. how this fits into the larger picture in Chicago and uh, education policy, school reform around the country. Yeah, well, as G2 said, this is, a, this is an issue of, first of all, of racial justice. Um, CPS, Chicago Public Schools, um, the Mayor Rahm Emanuel, beginning with Mayor Daley, have consistently, over the last 10, 12 years, been disinvesting in schools, in black and Latino communities, in neighborhood schools. They've been over-investing in privately run charter schools and selective enrollment schools um, in middle class and gentrifying areas of the city. Um, so we've had a, a whole history here and a citywide process of racial injustice in which we really have a two-tiered education system and diet is is really an example, a prime example of that process. And I also think that we um, need to think about that it's not actually, this is not just about education. It's a much part of a much bigger plan to remake this whole city um, into um, a gentrified city, a city for corporate headquarters, for financial institutions, for upper middle class people, and to push out working class African-American and Latino families. And the diet situation is, is, a, is a really prime example of that. Diet is located in beautiful Washington Park, a park that may be the site of the new Obama library. This is prime real estate that the real estate developers have been trying to get their hands on. There's much talk about marketing the whole area as an arts, as an arts district. One of the plans, the plan put forward by Little Black Pearl, that's an arts organization. They don't, they're not a school um, operator that runs a good school. They run a very poor, poor performing charter school at the moment. Um, they, their plan is uh, connected with Brinshore Developers, which is a real estate developer that focuses on arts development in the area. So this is part of a much bigger plan to push out working class African Americans from the whole Bronzeville area and to gentrify that area. And this is not only happening in Chicago. If we look around the country where schools have been closed in working class, low income, African American, Latino areas, we see that very often these plans are tied to gentrification and pushing people out of the city. Pauline Lippman, G2 Brown, thank you so much for joining us and we'll certainly keep following the story. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining us at The Real News Network.